Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today I will talk about the, the ESR that is the erythrocyte sedimentation rate and there is a lot of confusion when you see a raised ESR whether it is true raised ESR or there is some technical problem. So we must know about the technical problem behind the raised ESR. So what is ESR? This is actually erythrocyte sedimentation rate. Erythrocyte mean RBC. Sedimentation mean the settling down of RBC. And rate mean we take ratio with time. Let's suppose this is a tube. And we, we take the blood in both the tube. And we study both the tubes after one hour. And this is the settling down of RBC in one hour. So which one has high ESR? this tube or this tube the settling down of rbc if the rbc settled down faster it means that the, the 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 esr will be high if the rbc settled down slower it means the esr will be low now if you compare both the tube it means the rbc over here they are settled down faster as compared to this one so this one has a high esr we take the measurements from about to, to down from top to bottom so this one has high ESR because the RBC has traveled more distance in the same time as compared to this one now coming toward the basic concept that is the RBC is having negative charge so one RBC repels the another RBC but there are proteins in the blood which are having positive charges so what does this protein do they neutralizes these negative charges when these negative charges on the RBC are neutralized by the protein in the blood what happen the RBC they they combine together and they form a stake that stake is called Rolex formation so that charge is neutralized normally RBC repel each other these are actually the proteins which neutralizes the charges and after which the RBC becomes sticky and they stick to one another and then they fall down in a tube. So we are having three categories mild elevation of ESR, moderate elevation of ESR and severe elevation of ESR. But this is corrected ESR according to the age, according to anemia. We must address these two factors and I see a lot of patients that are uh, mismanaged just based on the uh, increased ESR will they have not exclude the age factor they have not exclude the anemia factor a patient is having HB of 8 and the ESR of 40 that is a not true raised ESR that is actually false elevation in the ESR due to anemia so in mild elevation less than 40 is a mild elevation but that is corrected ESR corrected ESR mean exclude this thing apply these two formulas moderate elevation in, in ESR mean 40 to 60 and severe mean more than 60 so age age is a risk factor for increase in ESR is the person ages the ESR increases this is multifactorial but it is said there is a, a tendency toward uh, anemia so how do you correct for age, age divided by 2, this is for males. This correction is for males. And this correction formula is for females. Age plus 10 divided by 2. Age plus 10 divided by 2. So this can be the expected ESR. So what does it mean? It means a patient is having, a male patient is 100 years old. A male patient, male patient. He is 100 years old what is the expected ESR in this patient 50 50 so if in a, in a, in a, in a male patient of 100 year if the ESR is 50 it means this is normal for him this is normal for him for the anemia 1 gram decrease in the hemoglobin increases ESR by 10 now this is very important let's suppose for example a patient is having hemoglobin of 8 now this 8 is decreased from how much from the standard let's suppose the standard is 13 and the patient is having 8 hemoglobin it means 9 10 11 12 13 so he is having 5 points drop in the hemoglobin and one drop increases the SR by 10 so 50 
you have to keep this thing in mind if the hemoglobin is decreased by 5 the SI will increase by 50 that is a very big number and you should not take these these figures for inflammation you should not take these figures for inflammation this is the expected increase in the ESR the expected increase in ESR this is not inflammation so do not start this patient on steroids or NSAIDs this is not inflammation this is according to anemia in the OPD sitting or on the uh, in, in the ward uh, we see a lot of patients and and the doctors are advising the the, 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 the wrong investigations they are, they are, they are they are going after the inflammatory markers and they are of course you have to confirm with uh, the inflammatory markers also but you have to keep this thing in mind that anemia causes raised ESR coming toward the serum albumin now the albumin has negative charge and the RBC also has negative charge so albumin repels RBC if the albumin repels the RBC it means the RBC shielding does not happen if the albumin repels RBC the RBC cannot settle down if the RBC cannot settle down it means the SR will be high what is the SR settling down of RBC if RBC cannot settle down due to the repelling action of albumin so the ESR will be low so so increase in albumin causes decrease in ESR and decrease in albumin causes increase in ESR if the serum albumin is decreased, let's for example, the patient is having CLD and serum albumin is decreased, so the ESR will be increased. Uh, till now, we are not having a corrected formula for serum albumin, but the two most common which I have discussed, we must apply these two things an expected increase in the ESR according to the age and according to the anemia. But in, in exam, uh, they do ask for albumin. And if the plasma proteins other than albumin are raised, they causes the neutralization of these charges and they increases the ESR. It is only the serum albumin that has inverse relation with the ESR. With this is part one for ESR. For part two, we will discuss in another.